Hello and welcome back to Red Room. This is the second part of the Eldar Spiritseer project and this side of things will be focusing on the non-metallic metal and uh, I wouldn't call it a tutorial, this is uh, very much an experiment into how to do this but I think that might be a valuable thing. It's one thing to watch people who absolutely know what they're doing go about it in a confident matter, a manner, but uh, it's another thing to see somebody doing something for the first time and really uh, making the mistakes, going back over things, yeah, realising, uh, yeah, getting insight into how this all works. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, please like, share and subscribe and at the end there will be a nice showcase of this finished project. Bye! So I have never done any 3D NMM in my life. This is a uh, dark grey from Vallejo. That is black. My understanding is that he might need some blue. So I'm going to use the tech that's blue. I want to be a bit sparing because this is a very blue model, so I don't want to go mad with them blue. Some more of this Ulthman grey as well. This is a nice cold grey. With our final thing being some white. So the theme of this whole project has been winging it. Well, this is this is yeah, this is winging it on an advanced scale. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is paint the white bits first, actually. Because as I've been finding out, if you try and build up to really light, sometimes you never actually get there, so... So, yeah, okay. I reckon the tip is going to be pretty damn bright. What tends to happen is it's like an alternate pattern. Notice people doing and painting is like an alternate pattern. So where it's bright on one surface, it's going to be dark on the other. So that will hopefully inform us of what to do. So maybe we want that to be bright. I don't want to do too, too, make it too busy. So. All we're doing here is sketching out where we think we're going to have these bright spots. Because as I say, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what to do with the spine of this. Hmm, I'll think about that. <laughs> and that's NMM sorted. <laughs> okay, so now the fun and games are going to be blending all of this, well, and correcting the mistakes we've made.
and we're just going to get progressively darker, smoothing out these gradients as we go. Darks are too dark at the moment. I'll get back to you when we figure this out a bit better. Wow, okay, that was a process. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's the best that we're going to manage right now, I think, with the experience we've got. had forgotten to actually add any blue to it and uh, yeah that is an important part of this I, I, I had underestimated um, if yeah you want to sell the sort of metallic coolness of it you do need that blue in there um, but yeah my initial sort of scheme was too busy so I just literally scraped all the paint off with a thumbnail and um, reapplied so yeah we will um, we will avoid that mistake on the other side so we'll be ignoring all of that and following this scheme yeah not an easy process this at all so we're just going to obliterate all of this careful that I don't ruin the other side. Alright, I've got to, I've got to cut myself just like I've never ever done non-metallic metal before like this, so you know. So we're just going to cover this whole thing with some of the Vallejo dark grey. So you can look at um, a tutorial just like this one and you can go, oh yeah, okay, I understand. But until you actually do it yourself, you won't know. You won't know. If that edge is a bit raggedy, we can deal with it. I'm not going to worry too much. But yeah, until you do it yourself, you won't actually know what the what the problems are. And we're gonna use this mess of um Adam um administratum grey Vallejo dark grey and um, some of this techless blue. We're just creating this sort of yeah, petrol blue. And we're going to follow what we've done on this side. Well, that's the idea anyway. We'll do opposites on the spine, I guess. Alternate that again. On the blade. So 
So I'm going to take some of this <coughs> dark grey and mix it into what we were just using. Okay, much chewing and throwing has been going on here. <laughs> We've probably spent a whole day working on um, on this sword and, and some more on top of that. Um, but I think we have achieved something. I'm not... It's not perfect, it's not what I wanted. But for a first go, I can't get too upset, I think. I think, uh, yeah, I did start again with how I'd um, initially planned to do the highlights, trying to do three sort of uh, bands of light and dark was just too busy, just too much, so I simplified that. And uh, yeah, I hope it's it's acceptable. It's a first attempt, so we have to we have to expect that we're not going to nail quite nail it. Okay, um, <laughs> we're having another about turn. This isn't working, and I don't think it's going to read particularly well given the white uh, background. So I'm going to try it and go for gold instead. So we're going to use some ochre brown from Vallejo as a base coat. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't, yeah, that gets left on the editing floor. We're also going to do the hilt in NMM gold. I may very well practice on this first before I go any further. With this chess piece I make another mistake. My camera just died on me. Um, I think one of the things that's stressing me out at the moment as well is the sort of lack of definition with all of this so I'm gonna scratch an itch that's sort of um, building up and just start the process off of doing these gemstones. I'm gonna use red for all of these just to... Um, well, it's a, it's all a bit primary colours, but it works. There is a reason they work together. So 
and we're just going to use word bear as red. I'll go back to you when we've finished doing all of this. So, we've picked out all the red gems with our um, word bearers red. I'm not going to do too much more with them until we're near the end because I don't want to do a lot of painstaking detail into making them look really nice and then um, make some mistakes. So, I'm going to focus on how I'm doing the staff. Little fiddly bits around his waist. I'm probably not going to show you this because I think, in all honesty, it's uh, I'm not really the person to be telling anyone how to do this at the moment. But if there's any good highlights, we will show them. And then we'll get on to worry about the sort of leather that I want to do because I do want there to be some sort of neutral colour brown or something going on in it to break up all these primary colours. So that is what we will do. So we've decided to um, cover this staff with a mixture of um, Gullium and Flesh um, contrast paint and some of the Griffon Orange. I'm treating it um, just like I would metallic gold in the hopes that this will help. I'm not I'm not entirely sure it will, but yeah, we'll see. So that's what it looks like right now, and we will return to you if we have any major breakthroughs in this non-metallic metal malarkey. And Mr. Spirit Seer so looks like this after I've applied some of the uh, ochre brown to the staff. Now we're going to go and put some Rhinox hide on as our, most, our darkest shadow. We'll see how that goes. And I'll show you what it looks like when I am done. Let's get, try and get this into a bit better focus. Yeah. And this is how the staff looks now with the Rhinox hide applied. We're going to now go up and use some of the sand yellow from Vallejo as our first proper highlight. And I will return to you when that is done. Wish me luck. Okay, this is how things stand now. We're going to go over this with a very watered down glaze of the ochre brown. Try and bring these sort of highlights together a bit more, highlights and lowlights, and we will see where we are in a second. Okay, we are going to put on some very old school 90s snake bite leather onto this staff in an attempt, in an attempt to uh, shade in these, um, blend in these shadows. And we'll see what we get from that. Okay, I think we, we're actually making some progress slowly but surely here. Um, so we've applied the snake bite black. And um, we've also uh, neatened up the. Um, oh, what is it called? Oh, sand yellow highlights and yeah some bits are um, looking reasonably okay so I'm now going to go into some ivory and having applied the ivory we are now looking at this 
it's getting better. I'm going to uh, neaten up all of the um, rhinoxide now. I've, I've done a little bit with um, burnt umber as well, but it's yeah, not really made a massive amount of difference. Yeah, it's, it's all right, <laughs> but we have to practice. And um, yeah, once we've neaten that up, then we're going to start worrying about doing all the gemstones. But in fairness, I still do have to deal with the gold around his waist, so yeah. And also on the ends of these. So. Then it will be worrying about the silver jewellery and his visor, and then yeah, this. Um, do some leather for the boots and maybe around his waist. So a nice neutral colour for that. So I will get on with neatening this and I will get back to you. Okay, everything is slightly coming together a little bit more now. Um, most of the silver is finished. I was going to do this bit of trim here, um, gold, but that is, uh, that's not the plan anymore. I just felt it was just a little bit too many yellowy colours all around his um, chest and head area. So I've just decided it's going to be blue now. Um, so I now want to start just doing the, um, the leather and the other, you know, and the sash. And for that we're going to do rhinoxide. I've also painted in all the gems on his staff. There we go, yes, now you can see him, yes. This is the view from Red Room. So, yeah, slightly happier. Got an awful lot to learn though. This is the view from Red Room. I don't know if this was the best model to have picked for this, but never mind. Okay, with the um, rhinoxide applied to make sure you can see that to all the areas I said, let's now take it up a little bit and we're going to use some Doomball Brown and we're going to blend it with the rhinoxide. Gradually adding more. This is the, this is the view from Red and now we're going to use some U shaped bone to highlight this. We're just going to add a tiny little bit more and we're going to put it down to a very thin line. And we may stick some snake bite there for contrast paint over this. Very thin down there. We're going to repeat that process now with the other brown stuff. Okay, I've applied a little wash of um, snake bite leather contrast paint to the um, to the leather bits, unsurprisingly. And uh, now we're just going to go and look at how we're going to do all these gems because hopefully that will start to make him look a little bit more um, exciting. Also worked on all the silver bits a bit more. Done a little bit more with the gold. Need to neaten all this up because I think that'll help a lot. I think having sharp edge highlights is really important for um, NMM. 
So yeah. So in order to do these <laughs> gems, it's a pretty simple process. So we've already painted them with Werbearer's Red. And now we're gonna use Evil Sun Scarlet and we're just gonna leave the bottom or we're gonna paint the bottom of the gems and we're gonna leave the top dark. And then we're going to use some orange. This is a uh, rust from Vallejo. Any orange will do. But we're using a nice, a deeper orange for this bit, and then we're going to use a final little, very light orange for the bottom. And here is light orange from Vallejo, and this is going to just go right. I'm hoping doing all of these will lift my spirits and uh, give me the, um, the necessary lift to do the rest of this. So, it's been a bit of a slog this to say the least. We have learned a lot. I think I should have, you know, <laughs> maybe stuck to something a bit more um, in my comfort zone, but at the same time I wouldn't have learned anything, so. And then just a final little point of brilliant white. And then we're going to repeat that process many times until all of them are done and hopefully it will start lifting the whole thing and making them look a bit more impressive. I'll get back to you when that is done. All the gems are pretty much done. I am now going to attempt to do this visor, which may go very well or very badly and be um, yeah, quickly abandoned and will retreat back to something else. We will see. So now we're going to use some techless blue. We're going to use some Iraqi sand. We've already got white on the wet palette. And you know what, we're going to use some royal blue as well. We've already got electric blue out there as well. Because the other thing we don't want to do is make it look exactly the same colour as the rest of his armour, because that's going to spoil the effect, I think. Well, here goes nothing. So if we decide that the horizon line would end around about there. See this is where it doesn't have to be even or anything because it could, you know, it could be a rocky outcrop he's looking at.
gonna use some glacier blue. <laughs> So now we're just going to go around the very edge of his visor and just make it very dark. It was a new Shepty bone, we're going to use on the uh, Ochre brown now. Now we're going to use some snake bite leather from way back when. What we have to realise, my darlings, is that every time we say that we've, we've got something, or we've, we've, <laughs> we've got this sussed, we haven't. We, we absolutely and totally haven't. So I, I went away and I thought, mm, I'll look at some references, and I realised, of course, I had done it wrong. If it's... Convex? I think it's convex if it's bulging out and it's concave if it's going in. Yeah, it would bend the um, reflection a different way, wouldn't it? So, ay So now we've got the reflection going another way. Going away from him, which, uh, yeah, you'd expect. Ay! I think now I just need to neaten him up. Look at the base. Everyone look at the base. And then neat neat name up, I don't know. But yeah, start looking at the base. And move on with our lives because this has now gone on too long. Far too long. And if I mutter once more about how much I've learned, yeah, yeah, but now I need to live my life and do other things. So yeah. And with that in mind, I think actually, yeah. I'm gonna get some gummy moon flesh and really water it down. And we're just gonna use a cheap brush for this because we don't need to be particularly finesse about it. We're just gonna slap this on to bring all the indentations out. This little thing here is going to be a pool that I am going to use my water effect. Okay, we'll leave that to dry. We'll leave that to dry. I'm just going to paint in some Dark Angels green into this crevice. colour the um, stuff I'm going to use which is this excellent AK still water that I used on the Biggie project so it's not too much of a problem but you know let's help it and I'm just going to go back over this u shafty bone everything's blending into each other I don't care anymore <laughs> I am at that point now I just want it to end Oh. oh god. Well, it'll make it easier to do the pace. <laughs> this is how long I've been working on this guy and how much he's mashed into this bloody putty. Ay, ay, ay. Let me get back to you. Ta-da! Okay, we're finally done. 
I'm so pleased. And a little bit of a, a bit more of an issue with this puddle than I thought I was going to. Despite it being very small, I thought um, we wouldn't have any issues with it sagging in the middle like we did with uh, the biggie um, base. But no, actually, no, it still, it still did the same sort of thing. You really have got to pour little small amounts and build it up. Um, but I think I'm happy enough with it now after a few um, repeat applications. And just added uh, a little bit of sand around the rim of it to imitate all the moss and vegetation that would collect in a very arid or dry sort of ruiny place if there was some water there so now all there is to do is uh, give you a showcase of him and uh, yeah on to the next project which will be I pray a more simple affair thank you for watching Please like, subscribe, and share. See ya, bye.